Hi, my name is Graham Smith, and I'm one of the authors that helped develop the learning approach to mathematics that is found in our textbook as well as the video you are about to experience. To learn more about our approach to learning mathematics, visit the web address that accompanies this video. Now, enjoy the video. Use proportions to solve percent exercises. This video will help you translate a written statement into a percent proportion and solve a percent exercise. Write a proportion. Let's start with some definitions. The standard form of a percent proportion is P over 100 equals A the amount over B the base. The percent is written as a ratio P over 100. The amount and the base form the second ratio A over B. Often percent exercises are written with the phrase a percent of the base is the amount. Look for these words to help you substitute the values into the proportion P over 100 equals the amount over the base. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to translate a written statement into a percent proportion. Example 1. Translate the written statement into a percent proportion. Well, Here is our written statement. What percent of 30 is 21? What well, we want to put this into our percent proportion. I think the easiest thing to start with is the percent itself. We know 100 is going here and on the other side we're going to have our mountain, our base, and in the top here we're going to have the percent. In this case it says what percent. So that indicates we don't know what the percent is. So that is going to be P, our unknown variable. Now we just got to make sure we get the amount and the base in the right spots. And the key to doing that is taking a look at the phrase here, a percent of the base is the amount. Notice in this statement we're always taking a percent of the base. So let's go back to our written statement and find out what we're taking the percent of and that will be the base. So if we take a look here it says what percent of 30. So right there is our base because that's what we're taking the percent of. Now the base goes in the bottom so 30 is going to go here and that is 21. That means 21 is going to be our amount and pretty much once we have the base identified it's easy to write the amount in because it can only really go in one other spot. So when I translate the written statement what percent of 30 is 21 I end up with a percent proportion P over 100 equals 21 over 30. Example 2. Translate the written situation into a percent proportion. Carlos's commission $16 is 10 percent of his sales. How much were his sales? All right. Well, we're trying to translate this into a percent proportion. So again, let's start 100 over here. Now let's look for the percent. That's always the easiest one to find. Well, 10 percent is right there. So we know that it's got to be 10 percent. So we're going to write a 10 up there. Now we need to find the amount and the base. Now let's go to the base next. So remember, we're always taking the percent of the base. So in this case, we're taking 10 percent of his sales. So we don't know what his sales are. So that is the unknown variable. So it looks like our base is the unknown variable. So that's going to stay B. And then that leaves the amount. The amount must be $16 because that's our only number left. And so when I translate the written statement, Carlos's commission, $16, is 10% of his sales, we get the percent proportion 10 over 100 equals 16 over B. Now it's time to check your understanding of translating a written statement into a percent proportion. Hit pause on your video player and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 1. Translate the written statement into a percent proportion. What is 40% of 15? Again, let's start. Get our percent proportion written. We know this is going to be 100. Now let's look for the percent. The percent is 40%, so we write 40 up here. Now let's next go to the base. Remember, we're always taking the percent of the base. So in this case, 40% of 15. So the base has to be 15. And since we have all numbers here, our amount must be the unknown, and that is correct. What is, that the, represents the amount in that statement, and that's an unknown amount. Question 2. Translate the written situation 
into a percent proportion. 45% of Angelina's time at work was spent calling 10 customers. At this rate, how many customers can she call using all her time at work? Okay, let's take a look. We know we have 100 here. Let's look for the percent first. 45%, it's right there. 45%, so there's our percent. Now let's go to the base. Remember, we're always taking a percent of the base. So in this case, 45% of Angelina's time at work. That's the base, Angelina's time at work. And they don't tell us how long Angelina is working in this situation. So that is unknown. So it looks like our base is unknown. And the amount, the amount is the time she spent calling 10 customers. So there is our amount is 10. Solve a percent exercise. When solving a percent exercise, you will solve a proportion in the form of our percent proportion. P over 100 equals A over B. Two out of the three variables will be known, and you will need to solve for the value of the third. Notice in all of our percent proportions before, we would get three of these values known. For example, we, in the last one we had, we knew the percent, we knew the base, but we needed to find the amount. And what we're going to show you in the next examples and guided practice is how to solve for that unknown variable. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to solve for an unknown value in a percent proportion. Example 3. What percent of 20 is 30? Well, first thing we have to do is we have to translate this into a percent proportion. So let's take a look. Here's 100. We're going to have our mountain and base on the right. Let's again start with a percent. So in this problem, it looks like what percent? So we don't know the percent. So that's our unknown value, P. Now let's go to the base. Remember, we're always taking the percent of the base. In this case, the percent of 20. So it looks like 20 is our base. And then our amount is going to be 30. So now I need to solve for the P, the percent, in this problem, which means I need to get this variable all alone on one side of this equation. So notice it's being divided by 100 right now. To undo that division by 100, I'm going to take and multiply by 100. Since I'm dealing with a fraction, I'm going to write that 100 over 1. Now whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the right side of the equation. So 100 over 1. On the left side, you can see our common factors of 100 dividing out, leaving us with just P. Now on the right side, we need to do some factoring. So across the top here, 30, I'm thinking 6 times 5. There's 6. There's 5. 100, I'm thinking 4 times 25. There's 4. There's 25. In the denominator, 20, I'm thinking 4 times 5. There's 4. There's 5. And then times 1. So it looks like common factors of 2. Uh, another common factor of 2 and a common factor of 5. So let's take a look what we have to multiply left here. Um, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. And then 30 times 5. Let's take a look. 30 times 5. Well, 30 times 5, an easy way to do that is just think 3 times 5. That's 15. Then add the 0. So this is going to give us actually 150. So it looks like when I solve for the percent here, I'm going to get 150 percent. Example 4. Andre paid a $25 tip on a $40 restaurant bill. What was the tip? Alright, let's take a look again. We got to translate this into a percent proportion. Start with 100. Let's look for our percent. Andrea paid 25 percent. So that's going to be our percent. Now remember, we look for the base next. So 25 percent of what? So she paid 25 percent tip on a $40 restaurant bill. So it looks like we're taking 25% of this $40. So that $40 is our base. And we want to know what the tip was, so that's going to be our amount. Okay? So there's our percent proportion. We're trying to solve for this variable A, the amount, in this right side. So we want to get rid of or undo this division by 40. So I'm going to multiply this side by 40 over 1. Multiply this side by 40 over 1. Let's take a look. On the right side, common factors of 40 dividing out, leaving us with the amount. On the left side, we have some factoring to do. 
So 40, I'm thinking 4 times 10. There's 4. 10 is 2 times 5. 25, I'm thinking 5 times 5. In the denominator, I have 1. 100, I'm thinking 4 times 25. There's 4. 25 is 5 times 5. All right. Let's divide out these common factors. Looks like a common factor of 5. Another common factor of 5 common factor of 2 and another common factor of 2. So it looks like what we have left then is 2 times 5 in the numerator which is 10 and then 1 in the denominator. So it looks like the amount that she paid here in a tip was 10 and now we want to write that as a dollar since we're talking about money. So the tip that she paid here was $10. Now it's time to check your understanding of solving for an unknown value in a percent proportion. Hit pause on your video player and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 3. What is 40% of 50? Well, let's start by translating this. Let's look for the percent. What is 40%? So our percent is 40%. So that's going to go here. Now, let's look for the base next. 40% of what? 40% of 50. We're taking the percent of 50. That means 50 is our base. And so that must mean we're looking for the amount here. Okay, So I'm trying to solve for A, which means I'm trying to isolate that or get it all by itself. So I need to undo this division of 50. To undo the division of 50, I'm going to multiply by 50 over 1 on the right side and do the same thing on the left side. The right side, you can see the common factors of 50 dividing out. We're left with just A. Now, on the left side, we have some factoring to do. So 50, I'm thinking 5 times 10. 5 is prime, 10 is not, so 10 is 2 times 5. 40, I'm thinking uh, 5 times 8. 5 is prime, 8. And when we actually factor 8, we get 3 twos. In the denominator, 1, 100. When I factor 100, uh, I'm thinking 4 times 25. There's 4, there's 25. Let's divide out the common factors now. 5 and a 5, another pair of 5s, a pair of 2s, and finally another pair of 2s. So it looks like when we get done here, in the numerator I have 2 times 5, which is 10, times 2 again is 20, 20 over 1, which is just 20. So it looks like when we solve for the amount here, we're going to get an answer of 20. Question 4. 36 is 120% of what number? Okay, let's first write this in our percent proportion. So our percent is 120. Now let's look for the base. 120% of what number? It looks like the base is what we're going to be trying to solve for here, and then the amount is going to be 36. Okay, now notice here that our variable is in the denominator. And it is difficult to solve for a variable in the denominator of a fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip both sides of this percent proportion. So on the right side, when we flip it, we'll have B over 36. On the left side, when we flip it, we're going to have 100 over 120. Okay. Now, this is a much easier proportion to solve. So notice we want to get B all alone. So we want to get rid of this division by 36. So to undo that, I will multiply by 36 over 1 and do the same thing on the left side. On the right side, common factors of 36 divide out nicely, leave us with B. On the left side, we're going to factor this out. 36, I'm thinking 6 times 6. There's the first 6. There's the second 6. 100, 4 times 25. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 5 is 25. In the denominator, uh, 120, I'm thinking 12 times 10. Well, 12, if I factor 12, let's take a look over here just to remind ourselves. Factor 12, that's 3 times 4, but then 4 is 2 times 2. So remember, I was thinking 12 times 10, so here is 12, 3 times 2 times 2, and then 10 is easy, 10 is just 2 times 5. All right, let's divide out our common factors here. Common factor of 2, common factor of 3, another common factor of 2, another common factor of 2, Finally, a common factor of 5. So let's swing around here and look at our answer then. B on the right side, and on the left side, 
Going back over here now, let's multiply these together. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So it looks like we're going to get an answer of the base here is going to be 30. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube or visit the web address that accompanies this video to learn more about our approach to learning mathematics.